Anila, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Karina, for the instructions. And thank you all for being here today uh, to end the International Women Month with some successful stories and insights uh, from some of amazing women from the Western Balkan region, which we will have the chance to hear today. We are very happy that apart from regional and local participation, we also have a global audience. I'm Anila, moderator of today's webinar. I am part of the team of USAID Catalyze Engines of Growth activity in the Western Balkans. And some of the main reasons for organizing this event include uh, increasing awareness about available sources of financing for women SMEs, uh, sharing USAID Catalyze Engines of Growth approach and lesson learned in supporting women's SMEs access to finance, showcasing successful examples of women SMEs from the Western Balkans that have access finance through EOG support, which we will have the chance to hear. And finally, enabling productive discussion among various stakeholders from the Western Balkan region and beyond. We will hear more from the key speakers about the USAID approach to helping women SMEs in the region and some background information on Catalyze Engines of Growth project. Before starting the introductory speeches, I would like to thank Market Links team for giving us the opportunity to host this webinar, and I hope that the discussion will be fruitful. Now it is my pleasure to welcome the first speaker, Mrs. Rosalia Kartishka Vasilevska, USAID Regional Economy Growth Specialist for the Western Balkans. So Rosalia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anila. Uh, I hope that everybody can hear me and see me and yes. that I will rely that this digital technology will stay stable until the end of this uh, webinar. So, uh, first of all, let me uh, to all of you uh, congratulate that you have actually devoted one hour of your time just before the weekend start to hear the stories of these wonderful and strong women. Uh, when I heard that we're having this title, woman, uh, she means business. It is a provocative, inspiring title that actually bring us again to the question, uh, what women entrepreneurs uh, can make to make the uh, economic growth more significant. Their contribution, definitely, it is uh, bigger than we can just imagine and describe with the numbers. It is estimated that uh, women SMEs with the full or partial female ownership can represent up to one third of the, or 38 percentage in a formal SME in emerging markets, which means eight to 10 millions of them. These firms represent a significant share of employment generation. They are generating jobs and they are generating economic growth potential. So with the women participation, it is estimated that reduced per capita income growth can be 0 0.1 up to 0 0.3 percentage points. So more women in the business, more equal and balanced representation between women and men can mean that the overall economic growth will be higher and that it's for a good of all of our societies. So women businesses, women owned businesses appears to be restricted in their uh, growth paths they are usually experiencing financial and non-financial barriers. Where this particular program, uh, Engines of Growth for the Western Balkans, is supporting is actually two uh, windows. First is to mobilize private capital from banking and non-banking institutions. And second one, which seems to be very interesting and very well accepted among the beneficiaries, is actually facilitating alternative financing to SMEs. Why we are talking about the alternative funding? Simply because when, as a women particularly facing these non-financial barriers, the women will go in a bank or they will not have collateral or returns that this path through banks and through access to finance is very difficult. That's why this program, four-year program, which is now just started the third year, 
with this budget that it's available have uh, you know dedicated committed all the efforts to beside the traditional loans to uh, through the banks to also support uh, women and their access to finance also their access to markets through the grants through the fintech digital platforms to the crowdfunding venture capital macro financing or private equity funds so this program which is very open to all the risk to all the innovations in the financial uh, service sector will hope definitely uh, change the uh, financing in environment for the women owned businesses i can only congratulate to all the women that i have met on the path uh, while uh, being a part of this program and I hope that more and more of these successful cases will appear in the near future. So thank you from again for your participation. And I strongly believe that the woman is really power in the future. Thank you. Your mute on your. Hi, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> thank you, Rosaya, for your time and support in our activities. Now I would like to give the word the USAID Catalyze Engines of Growth team lead, Mrs. Dragana Stanojevic. Thank you very much, Anila, and uh, welcome everyone to this uh, exciting uh, webinar. Uh, it's an afternoon in Western Balkans. I don't know what time is with you in the audience, but I'm definitely happy to hear that there was a lot of interest from participants worldwide to hear more about our experience and um, how can we create uh, more opportunities for Western Balkans women-owned businesses. Uh, USAID Catalyze Globally is uh, an initiative that covers 28 countries on three continents and aims to mobilize 2 billion capital uh, fr from private investors to be invested in the growth and the assistance to SMEs. Why is that so? Because, as Rosalie already mentioned, 99% uh, of uh, companies in most of the uh, developing economy are SMEs. And uh, if we don't really pay attention to them and help them become more productive and grow quickly, we are hindering badly each individual economy. So the Western Balkans engines of growth activity has the same aim to uh, although we do focus mainly on extending uh, the financing choices and uh, strengthening some of the existing financing for uh, SMEs in a way that would be more adequate for them, in a way that would more suit the specific needs of SMEs and in particular women SMEs. So having said that, what did we encounter so far? We uh, we're faced with the fact that uh, uh, women SMEs are usually small, have up to 10 employees, have little or no collateral, uh, are more risk averse than their uh, male peers, uh, and um, very often are not bankable, and we are a region that is still strongly relying on banks and commercial banks as the main financing source. So. Um, what uh, women companies also need is uh, strengthening them and providing them with technical assistance that will help them access new markets, that will help them uh, achieve some standards that are required to enter new markets, and that will uh, provide to them additional technical advice uh, on how to improve their products and how to uh, achieve a higher network of their customers. By doing that, uh, they will, of course, increase their sales, which means increasing their revenues and become more interesting for uh, lenders or investors. So, uh, more, uh, so it will be easier for them to uh, also get adequate financing. Uh, what we really are doing we are having a threefold approach one is that access to markets that i already mentioned the other one is uh, forming 
a regional network of business advisory service providers, and some of them are here with you today. Uh, and the third one, as Rosalia said, is working on uh, promoting alternative financing and also trying to establish some innovative and new sources of financing in this region. Uh, I'm happy that today we, you, I will be also <laughs> again uh, able to hear and that definitely the audience will be able to hear uh, first-hand experiences both from the side of our uh, female business providers, uh, advisory providers, and uh, from the beneficiaries. And I'm sure that uh, this is going to be an inspiring and interesting conversation. So with that, I'm leaving you to those who really have a lot to say <laughs> about all of the topics related to women entrepreneurship, women SMEs, and how they deal with all of that. And of course, to Anila, who is our facilitator of uh, the communication today. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you, Dragana, for your remarks. Uh, before starting the discussion, I would like to give a short introduction for each of the panelists. The first speaker is Pranvir Agujo, who works in CBS, EOG's partner in alternative finance and consultant from Albania. So, hi. Uh, we will have a chance to hear from her both from the financial consultant perspective, working with uh, women in Sydney's firsthand, and as a developer of financial products tailored for women in Sydney's. Our second speaker is Arieta. I'm very happy to have Arieta in this webinar, one of our favorite success stories. Arieta is the founder of Timac, uh, which is a leading company in Albania in manufacturing vehicles and various machinery. We'll have a chance to hear from her story on how she managed to successfully open her company, the challenges uh, she overcame and how she access finance. Our third speaker is Viriana. We will also have the opportunity to have another success, successful story from Viriana uh, from Montenegro. Viriana is the founder and owner of Kids clothing brand called Mixo. She's a fashion and custom designer, and she will talk about what it's like to be an entrepreneur in this region, challenges and opportunities of working also in the uh, textile industry in this region. Last but not the least, we have our partner, Dragana from Montenegro, who besides uh, from running a successful company, uh, she's also helping women SMEs uh, with access to finance and access to market, as uh, both uh, our keynote speakers, Dragan and Rosalia, pointed out the importance of having both, um, uh, both consultants when it comes to uh, being a successful uh, women SMEs in this region. Uh, she will also give us some interesting insights on the needs of women SMEs and what we can do to support them better. So, uh, Prandera, uh, you operate in Albania, and uh, we have a global audience today and in this webinar. So, it is a, if you can give some uh, broad overview of the macroeconomic situation in Albania or in the region, uh, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anila. And I'd like to greet um, everyone that has joined the webinar. To keep you brief overview, um, Albania is a small country located in the Western Balkans, and as most markets, Albania's economy has been hit by some consecutive, consecutive crises in the last years, starting from an earthquake in 2019, the global pandemic, of course, and then continued with the invasion of Ukraine, uh, which caused the energy crisis as well, and it's now in a high inflation rate moment. Uh, so, uh, these are some crises, however, that have um, caused instability, not only in Albania, but in most markets all over the world. But, it's, but for a fragile market like Albania, of course, these are uh, important. However, I must say that I remain optimistic into a better outlook for the future of business environment in Albania. And um, uh, to support that, I'd like to give a brief overview of the access to finance uh, a perspective in, in Albania with both the supply and uh, demand of capital on women entrepreneurs. Uh, starting with the supply of demand, um, I can say that in Albania, and this is common for the region, I believe, um, is the bank-centric market, which means that banks account for 
more than 95% of the capital dispersed. And the equity financing or alternative financing instruments are almost non-existent in the market. So from this perspective, uh, of course, banks see themselves in a very comfortable position uh, with not much competition in terms of diversity of financial instruments. So uh, from the supply side, I can say that very few banks have a very dedicated approach to women entrepreneurs, for example. However, I can say that in the last years, uh, overcoming the uh, global pandemic and seeing how the pandemic has disrupted markets and changed um, everything, banks are now starting to slowly move uh, and expand their lending offering and looking to acquire new clients. And most of all, they're looking to differentiate themselves. So um, now they're start, uh, especially women entrepreneurs, uh, and is a, is a topic that is in every bank's uh, so social agenda, and it's also a requirement from parent uh, companies. Uh, however, for the banks to develop a very good product tailored to a certain underdeveloped segment, uh, they often lack the focus needed on that, and they often lack the capacities needed on that. Um, and without the help of external advisors, um, I think that this would be a bit difficult. Thank you, Pramvira. That was a very good insight from coming from Albania and your first-hand experience in consultant and uh, with banks, uh, of course. Uh, Dragana, what is the? I wanted to ask you what is the situation in Montenegro in relation to women SMEs, and what is the lesson learned in that? Uh, thank you, Anila. Good afternoon to everyone. So uh, in Montenegro, there is a big gap between uh, men and women entrepreneurs, and the most common reason for this gap is less self-confidence and access to finance. Uh, in order to improve this situation, it is necessary to help women SME to raise their level of self-confidence and to inform women about available source of financing and as uh, well as help with uh, the application itself. So, uh, as my colleague from uh, Albania said, the situation regarding the source of financing and the position in which the banks find themselves is similar, so then I can't repeat all that. But what I have to say is um, that the le lesson that we learned uh, and that lesson is uh, that uh, hard work on the supplier side of the market and to uh, help banks to develop financial projects more appropriate for uh, women SME and their needs. Thank you. Thank you, Dragana. So we can see that the situation is quite similar throughout the Western Balkans region. Pramvera, to go back to you, we heard from you that the supply side is starting to understand that there is a need to have a tailored approach when it comes to uh, women SMEs and their access to finance. What about the demand side? In which sectors are women SMEs more present? Is there a need for access to finance? If yes, what finance do they need? Okay, thank you, Anila. Uh, well, I've seen from my experience as a consultant, but also so the statistics are there, and I've seen it from that, that usually women-led businesses are smaller in size and mostly operate into the services sector. Um, I don't know, I'd be very interested to hear from my colleagues from Montenegro if this is the same um, there, but this is the situation in Albania. And I think that women SMEs face some challenges in scaling their business. Uh, that could be due to maybe lack of networks and uh, mentorship. It could be due to lack of skill enhancement programs. Uh, but I also believe that it's a bit uh, rooted in the historical because uh, most large enterprises in Albania are focused on the traditional business model. For example, production, manufacturing, construction, which used, historically used to be led by men. So I think that that continued a bit into the recent years as well. Uh, and of course, for women SMEs to shift from a smaller size to a larger size, they would need capital investments and therefore access to loans uh, or other funding products. Uh, while the services sector usually requires much less uh, capital investments than the traditional sectors, thus I believe making women more comfortable in operating in less capital intensive markets. But to answer your question, um, of course, that women SMEs need access to finance. Every business needs access to finance in order to scale it up and to 
continue growth and accelerate the business and continue to another stage. So definitely, yes. Thank you, Pramira. We have also seen with our project uh, here in the region that most of the women SMEs, uh, unfortunately, are of a micro size, one to ten employees maximum, and are more concentrated in the service sector, which could be, as you said, a result of lack of access to finance and capital. What is the main uh, obstacle to access finance for these women SMEs, uh, Pramira? Uh, well, Anila, I've seen that um, in Albania, for example, uh, the, I, I would say the main limitation would be uh, limited access to collateral. Now, we know how banks are. Obviously, banks are not risk crazy risk takers. They want to back every loan that they give with the appropriate amount of collateral. And unfortunately, in Albania, due to some flaws in laws, but not only that, women have uh, less access to collateral such as property or land the, that a bank would need. And then uh, this creates a cycle where banks, uh, where women-led SMEs are, are seen a bit riskier by, by banks because they do not have collateral and banks are not willing to, to lend to them as much as they would to a man-led uh, business, which has collateral. Um, I would also add that sometimes women SMEs are a bit more hesitant and maybe lack the confidence to knock on the bank's door and to ask for financing and to be confident in their investment plan and what they they want to achieve. So yes, that, that yes, would be my, also, my that collateral requirements from the banks are often seen as a first obstacle uh, when they approach burden. yeah first burden when they approach the banks as very few women in the Western Balkans, unfortunately, inherit or own property. Uh, for example, we have seen cases with our cases with our uh, where well established, well established. If someone can just um, turn off their uh, off their because I can Adit, I think it's you. Okay, sorry for that. Um, for example, we have seen with our cases uh, where well-established women SMEs in need of uh, capital to either buy equipment or working capital to expand the business cannot do so just because they like collateral, as you said. That was also the case with Arieta. Maybe Arieta, you can tell us how you were rejected several times from banks because you didn't have collateral and they considered your five years old company as a startup. Thank you. Uh, as some of you may know, I run a business that specializes in manufacturing of superstructures. A few years ago, I found myself in a situation where I needed to purchase some new equipment in order to expand my business and uh, meet growing demand from customers. However, I quickly realized that securing a loan from a bank would not be easy. Uh, despite having been in business for five years and having a solid track record of generating revenue and profits, I was uh, repeatedly rejected by several banks because they considered my business to be a startup and lacked of sufficient uh, collateral. Thank you. Uh, what was, and we know that uh, you experienced with CBS and with Pramvera as a consultant, um, helped you on, on getting this uh, finance without collateral. Um, how did you find the service? Uh, uh, was it helpful, helpful in terms of saving time and making better financial decision? Uh, CBS facilitated an introduction to Pro Credit Bank and helped me obtain a non collateralized loan of uh, 150,000 euro within three weeks of meeting with them. Uh, I, found, I found working with CBS to be a very positive experience. Uh, they were able to save me time and secure me the best deal with allowing me to concentrate on acquiring new contracts and running my business. And uh, I was impressed by their expertise and resources, which allowed me to make more informed uh, financial deci decisions and uh, navigate complex financial issues uh, more effectively. Thank you, Arieta. And we are very glad to hear uh, that with help of EOG and our partners, uh, women like you can access finance uh, and grow your business. Pranvera, I also uh, I would like also to hear again from you because I know that you come from a family of entrepreneurs, and beside from the economic drawbacks that you mentioned before, are there any social constraints limiting women to enter the business world in this region? Uh, thank you, Anila. 
Yes, coming from a family of entrepreneurs myself, um, I that the first gener generation of businesses and the first generation of business, let's say my parents' generation, uh, women assumed a more supporting role or assisting role, uh, letting their husband be the head of the business and the key decision maker. Now, this is a, something social. It comes with tradition, I believe. And uh, 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 of course, that some women over time did assume a more significant role in the family business, but in mass, it remains the same. However, I can say that the new generation, with the new generation coming into the family business, things are changing. And I'm very optimistic that now the gender no longer makes a difference at all into running a business. Thank you. Yes, I also hope that. I would like also to hear from Arieta, um, who is also breaking the stigma of owning a company in an industry that is predominantly occupied by men and operating in the Western Balkan country where social and cultural prejudices uh, towards women working exist. Uh, did you experience Arieta or ever felt in a way judged or not taken seriously? For example, uh, while you are negotiating with buyers to sell your services and products. Uh, yes, as a woman in a male dominated industry and operating in a country where social and cultural prejudice exist, I have experienced a judgment and not always been taken seriously. Uh, there have been times when I have been negotiating with buyers to sell my products and have felt that my gender was a barrier being taken seriously. Uh, however, uh, as my business started to gain traction and more clients saw the quality of my work, uh, this perception began to shift. Yeah, I'm very glad to hear. Yeah, I'm very glad to hear it. with your work. You are also leading uh, the way for other women uh, which want to be part of this industry can work and succeed as you. Until now, we have talked about the supply and demand side situation and overview both taken from a perspective of Pranvera, who is our partner and consultant, and uh, from the demand side, from Arieta, a successful business woman. Um, what about uh, the solutions and or opportunities that women SMEs can have from financial institution? Is there any program or initiative towards that in this region? Uh, Pranvera, I know that uh, um, as a partner of our project, you're working on financial products um, through EOG support and you are developing products for women SMEs. Um, how that will affect women SMEs and their needs? Can you tell us more about these products? Uh, yes, I'm glad to, to do so. First, I'd like to say that um, despite the challenges that women face, I strongly believe in the potential that and they're just as qualified to run a business as a man is and Arieta is the example to show this uh, to explain a bit more about what we're doing at CS regarding to tackle the problem and um, uh, to develop financial products I'd like to explain about um, CAFE CAFE is our project which stands for Catalyzing Alternative Financing for Entrepreneurs and is supported by uh, catalyze EOG project. Okay. With that, we're working with uh, supply providers, so we're working with banks and financial institutions in order to develop alternative financing instruments for the market to boost development and fund absorption by SMEs. Uh, we aim to offer better terms and conditions uh, through these alternative markets, and we we have several areas where we focus. For example, green energy or uh, leasing, solar leases, reverse factoring. But the product that I like the most and that I'd like to, to uh, explain a bit more is uh, Empower Her Financially. Now, this is a, actually is a comprehensive prog program that will enable women in business to embrace financing to grow their enterprises. Uh, this is implemented through our partner banks in addition to finance. And the beauty of this product is that in addition to financing, so the loan and the capital that they will get, uh, the bank will also offer assistance and skill enhancement in SMEs, and this will be for free. So I think that this is the problems that we mentioned uh, earlier. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kranvira, for explaining these products. And they are very interesting for me, and I hope it will be interesting for the audience if they have later questions about these products. You can explain more in detail. Um, so we can see that, in general, Albania is moving a huge step towards alternative finance, and we are very happy that our partner, CBS, is doing that. Uh, Kranvira, I work closely with, with banks, and uh, what is your experience with them? We all know that banks are somehow, if I can say, bureaucratic and reluctant to work with women SMEs, as they see women SMEs as more risk averse in comparison to male SMEs, unfortunately. On the other hand, uh, we have seen and evidence have shown that women are better savers than men, more responsible borrowers, and are more calculated risk takers when it comes to uh, making financial decisions. What you can say about that, your experience with banks, Pramira? Uh, it's true, Amela, but uh, you know that to change the mindset of banks, it's not that easy, it's a bit difficult. Uh, especially change their mindset regarding uh, women SMEs or other underserved uh, sectors of uh, of their clients. And I can say that, however, so when we started operating with banks, we explained exactly what you just mentioned, that um, from statistics, uh, women are better, better, have a better risk profile than men. They are better savers, they are more responsible with money. And what's most important, and that's the language that the banks like to hear, uh, they have a lower NPL, which is non-performing loan percentage. Uh, and the banks took, uh, did confirm this with their portfolio of clients, that uh, women SMEs have a lower NPL. So they were excited to actually uh, start and introducing the products that are dedicated to women. And this was a big win for us. And we're very proud to say that um, we, our cooperation has been very successful with one of the biggest banks in Albania which is now adopting this uh, program that I mentioned earlier, which is tailored to women SMEs. The beauty of it is that uh, because the product was well built and they like very much, uh, now this product can be soon um, be backed by a guarantee fund, which will uh, obviously boost the development and fund absorption by women SMEs. And uh, uh, the beauty of being uh, ba backed by a guarantee fund is now that um, the risk that this uh, women SME might have is shared between the guarantee fund and the bank so that the bank can require less collateral, which is their main burden of not giving out loans. Mm -hmm. And they can also offer preferential terms and conditions to women SMEs, uh, which uh, obviously it's a, a very good thing and will, I believe, will boost this underserved uh, sector. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I agree with, uh, with the notion that uh, and with my experience that guarantee funds can be a good option, uh, not only for women SMEs, but for SMEs that are perceived as riskier by the banks and financial institutions. Um, so I would like also to include you, Dragana, because I know that you're helping Miriana to access finance, similar to what Pranvera was doing with Arieta, and uh, which became later a success story. Can you tell us more about this, how you are helping her in accessing finance? Yes. Uh, so uh, when I uh, met Emiliana and visited uh, her production, she presented me her development plan and told me what she needed to get in the terms of the equipment, software, etc. Uh, we started looking for the best source of financing, and when I received information that the uh, program support program for a woman business, um, which is financing by the European Union, has been the uh, announcement, I called her and I presented that program. Uh, after we read uh, details that uh, together program and we mis uh, made the decision to apply for it. Uh, first of all, I helped her to create a financial plan from the purchase of modernized equipment uh, that she needs in order to improve uh, her uh, production process. Then I helped her to create a specification uh, for the development of the, that software uh, that is uh, the, to define what that software should do in uh, her production. Also, 
uh, we made uh, in DEFINE uh, all process of implementing all ISO standards that she needs uh, in uh, her production in a way to implement uh, uh, in order to rise uh, the quality of its uh, product production projects and uh, at, in the end of that, of that process I helped her to fill out and submit the application from that uh, program that I mentioned before. So that is the following steps the, until uh, today that I uh, helped Mirena in this process. Thank you, thank you, Dragana. And as we can see from your uh, from your points, it's a lot of work that consultants are doing, and I wish success to both of you. And we'll hear more later from Miriana and her experience. Um, we know that uh, I just wanted to say that the digital economy provides a great opportunities for women SMEs. A digital present, especially a digital marketing platform, so different kinds can make a woman's business more visible and provide a venue for presenting products to new markets that require less time and resources. Moreover, uh, platforms such as FinTech and alternative sources of finance, as Pranvera explained before, can uh, be a great opportunity for introducing new customized products and services that meet the business requirements for women SMEs. Pranvera, I know CBS Ryuji support is doing a lot. So again, I want uh, to uh, ask you about the platform uh, that you are developing, uh, which is called Lores Plus, a fintech platform that will uh, connect banks and SMEs and will enable SMEs to apply online to different types of loans. Can you tell us more about this platform, how it will benefit SMEs, especially women SMEs in that perspective? I'm happy to because Laura's Plus is my favorite topic, actually. Laura's uh, <laughs> uh, stands for Loan Referral System and it's a cutting edge fintech platform that is developed with the support of USAID and Catalyze. Now, this referral platform is actually one of, the, of its kind in the region and it connects SMEs with banks directly. Uh, but it puts SMEs in charge of their application. So we mentioned before that one of the constraints may, might be because uh, SMEs in, and uh, women SMEs in particular are a bit not confident to knock on the bank's door, but with Flores uh, on their hand, they can just log in, they can um, uh, scan through the platform. The platform is powered by a powerful algorithm, which will rank all banking offers available in the market, tailored to the profile of the SMEs. Now, this is very important because the SME can now, uh, apart from being in charge of the application, can now have the power to make informed decisions, meaning that they can go and apply and get the best offer that is um, tailored to their profile. The beauty of Flores is also that um, it's backed by professional financial consultants, which are behind the platform, but that are always connecting with the SMEs. They can assist that at any time and uh, they can build a better business plan or a better uh, investment plan for these SMEs. And this is all offered for free uh, through Loras because our costs are borne by the bank. So SMEs now have a great tool in their hands to, to be more confident when applying to a bank and to be more confident that their success rate uh, of getting a loan disbursed will be bigger. And um, this is particularly helpful, I believe, for women SMEs. So they can be confident when they are powered by this algorithm as well as these financial experts behind Lores. And this is all offered for, for free for them. So um, it, I think that it would really help women SMEs access finance. And uh, maybe another feature of Lores that I'd like to mention is the fact that Lores will host um, educational content as well. So it will host um, uh, all the alternative financing products that we're developing with CAFE uh, will be part of Flores. So people can now read about these uh, products, learn how they work, learn what are the benefits and how they can uh, benefit from, uh, from these products. So I believe that this will also increase awareness in the market. And especially for women SMEs, this would be um, helpful. I hope thank I gave you. a clear picture. Yes, thank you, Pranvera. Yeah, if the audience have any questions later on, they can uh, ask questions about this uh, platform. Yes, and I think the way to, to really launch, launch it and be uh, user uh, friendly for all SMEs, especially women SMEs, which are my favorite. Um, a lesson learned also with our activities in this region is that greater education and access to information 
can help women uh, make more informed decisions around identifying and accessing suitable financing. Um, there is a lack of hands-on education around financing and financial literacy tailored to the business needs of women SMEs uh, in this region. So Lores Plus uh, can be the right tool for that and it, it can be useful um, not only for SMEs in Albania but all region. Uh, can you tell us more about your story on how you came up with the idea of opening a business and uh, did you have any financial uh, support in the beginning? Uh, certainly. I worked as an engineer in automotive sector for many years before returning to Albania five years ago to start my own business. Uh, I co-founded a company that sells trucks with support structures, and after winning a tender to build ambulances in Albania, I learned how to build them and began offering uh, other conversion services as well, like police cars, fire trucks, and mobile clinics. And uh, initially, I had a co-founder who uh, provided financial support for the business. However, he believed that the company would not be successful in the long term and left uh, shortly after the COVID-19 pandemic began. And this left me on my own uh, to find the financial resources necessary to keep the business running. Yeah, I know the story and I'm um, very glad that you succeeded, succeeded even though many, uh, many difficulties that you had in the be beginning. Um, you also export your services to different countries. Uh, how did you manage to enlarge your business? We know that transitioning from a small company uh, when you found, found it five years ago uh, to a medium and large uh, business as you are now, you need money and investment. Uh, expand, expanding my business to new markets and scaling up is certainly a challenge that requires significant uh, investment. Uh, one way that I was able to enlarge my business was by actively seeking out uh, new opportunities, new contracts. I was doing uh, every time more network meetings. Uh, in addition to seeking out new business opportunities, I also focused on uh, building a strong team and investing in the latest equipment uh, and technologies to improve the quality of our products. Uh, of course, none of this would have been possible without access to capital. Uh, that's why I was so grateful for the support uh, provided by CBS, which helped me to secure a non-collateralized loan. Uh, this infusion of capital allowed me to purchase a new equipment and expand my business, which in turn opened up new opportunities for growth and uh, expansion. Thank you. Thank you, Adi. Thank you. Thank you, Adi. Very interesting story indeed. Uh, Miriana, uh, hi. Uh, we didn't hear from you, but now is your time. Uh, uh, we have heard from Arieta her story on what it's mean to be uh, what it means to be a woman as in the region. Can you tell us more about your company, Mixo? Uh, first of all, hello everyone. Uh, I am very happy to be part of this panel. Uh, well, uh, I am an entrepreneur from uh, Montenegro, from Podgorica. I am a fashion and costume designer. And I'm uh, uh, I'm uh, owner of company Mixo. Mixo it's a company that produces uh, kids' clothes under the brand Mino, and also uh, home textile. It's a, a brand Mixo. So uh, well, I'm the owner of company, and also it's a CIO. Thank you, Miriana. Um, you know that there is a perception, uh, and I truly believe that, that women uh, tend to employ more women. Is that true? And what is your experience with that, with your company? Uh, well, uh, thank you for asking that. Uh, that is a good question. Uh, well, uh, there, uh, there has always been more women in the uh, fashion industry and also in uh, textile production. So when I first opened the company, uh, there was three of us. Uh, and uh, now, I'm, uh, now I'm proud to say that uh, we are now we are a team of ten uh, female employees. Uh, so um, I'm happy to know that I can provide the jobs uh, for women and empower women. Um, uh, empower women. So uh, many of my uh, employees 
uh, worked before, but uh, I, I uh, need to say that uh, they didn't have official uh, official uh, contract, uh, medical insurance or retirement plan. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is common problem in Montenegro. Uh, there is some improvement last year, but uh, we still uh, uh, we still we still have a lot of to do, uh, a lot of work to do. So, uh, as a woman and young entrepreneur, uh, I can understand women uh, pro women's problems, and also uh, I, I experienced I experienced myself. Thank you, Mariana. You are a great, I can see, example of a young entrepreneur and successful one. And you touch upon a very a sensitive issue in this region, an informal economy, and how a women uh, tend to uh, be employed without contracts and any, any social benefits whatsoever. Um, I want to know more. How did you uh, come up with the idea to open an online shop for kids' clothing? I know that you also said you studied uh, fashion and design, and maybe you were motivated to to enter in that industry uh, well yes um, after i finished my faculty in serbia uh, i decided to come back uh, in uh, Monten come back to montenegro uh, so as a fashion designer i've always uh, wanted to be self employed employed and uh, to have my own brand so um, during uh, my studies, I came across uh, kids were uh, designers, and uh, this is where I saw uh, a lot of potential. And uh, I recognize potential business. Um, uh, I, I see a lot of potential in in this uh, uh, business area. Uh, so with the success uh, uh, at the studies and the awards I received for my uh, student and solo artworks, uh, I w in, at, at different uh, fashion, fashion shows I applied. Uh, as a designer, I was pretty self-insured and determined to invest in my, uh, in, in to start on my own business. Uh, so I was uh, determined to work hard and I had enormous wish to pursue my dreams. So, uh, in addition to this, I, uh, I I enjoy working with kids, and this uh, this um, allowed me to be uh, creative and also to be a designer. So uh, I choose uh, kidswear because of that. Uh, kidswear production every production is very uh, complex process, but uh, kidswear uh, clothes are. Uh, I, in that period, uh, I choose kidswear because it's simpler to organize. And also, uh, I came up uh, uh, with the idea to start with household textile uh, because it's easier uh, to produce and also br uh, brings uh, um, uh, steady revenue, uh, what is very important. And uh, we all need um, uh, home textile. So. Yeah, uh, uh, it's a constant demand of uh, that products, and uh, also that turns out to be a, uh, to be a wise decision. Uh, so uh, I'm very satisfied. Thank you. I'm very glad to hear that your business revolves around something that you also love doing and you have a passion for it. Um, can you tell us more um, about your first investment in the company? How long it took? from the institution to issue the funds and how did you deal with it? I know it was dif a difficult situation time. Yeah. Yes, uh, very difficult, but uh, well, uh, I decided to put my uh, ideas into the business plan and uh, I uh, decided to present it to uh, development, uh, to in development uh, investment in development fund of Montenegro. Uh, that fund um, approved my funding based on my application uh, and gave me a loan with good conditions. So the whole process uh, was not simple and easy. Uh, it took me almost uh, one year. And uh, also I had, uh, the, it's very important thing that I had uh, financial support from my family. And also uh, I used my uh, family house as a mortgage. Uh, so. Um, 
uh, the whole process was very difficult. Uh, I, I faced with a lot of uh, problems with bureaucracy, uh, with public institutions in Montenegro. And I can mention uh, one example. Well, uh, there was one technical mistake in uh, papers, and they took me three months to correct that uh, that uh, that mistake uh, before I could get the document to be able to use my house as mortgage. Uh, so the irony is the public institutions in Montenegro employ many people, uh, but they are still outdated and uh, their procedures are very uh, outdated. They don't invest in modernization mm -hmm. and uh, access to that is, very, is not simple. So. Uh, I managed, managed to provide national financial support, financial support and start uh, the production. So uh, the, first year, uh, the first two years in business uh, were very difficult. I had to face with a lot of internal and external uh, problems. Um, well, I can mention uh, only a few of them. Well, uh, the lack of qualified uh, workforce uh, in our market was was big problem. Uh, we have forced forced to, to train uh, employees uh, from scratch ourselves, uh, which is uh, much slower and uh, more expensive uh, process. Uh, also, uh, one more, um, uh, another impediment com still comes from the black market. Uh, unfair com competitors uh, sell, uh, sell uh, their products over social media, on farmers' markets, and through other un unregistered uh, points of sale. And that is uh, that is the way uh, the uh, the way the, the way uh, they avoid to pay taxes. I pay. Uh, so, uh, we are small production uh, uh, that uh, successfully uh, went through COVID-19 uh, and we are proud of our, our brands uh, that have become recognizable in Montenegrin market and brought us a lot of, and brought us a lot of joy uh, to everyday life uh, of our consumer, consumers. Um, I believe now is the, the right time for an upgrade. Thank you, Mariana, and I'm very glad that you uh, had also the support of your family, beside from having many, many difficulties in accessing uh, finance, like long procedures and also other institutional um, barriers when it comes to, um, to getting, uh, you know, access uh, to finance. Um, I've seen your your uh, website and it's you have very I can say from my experience that you have a very good uh, it's clothing. Um, now that you have successfully managed to overcome some of the constraints that you just mentioned, I believe in order to enlarge the business, you need to invest uh, more in equipment and employ more people because you will have more demand uh, in order to increase the production and reach other markets as well. Because I know that you, you mentioned in our conversations before that you want also to um, expand um, not only to sell in Montenegro market, but also why not in through the region and other other countries. Well, uh, yes, uh, that is true. Uh, for next year, uh, we have uh, we have been planning uh, an expansion in terms of number and categories of, of products uh, for under both brands, uh, Mino and Mixo, uh, as well an increase of number of employees. Well, our main goal, uh, our main goal is to uh, further develop Mino brand and export it to foreign market. Uh, well, we have already ensured an export sales channel, and currently the only limitation factor is our production uh, capacity. Uh, so the following preconditions have to be met is uh, purchasing new machines, uh, implementation of uh, advanced software, and also implementation of uh, ISO standards. So. Uh, yeah, also Dragana mentioned that uh, how she is helping you with access in finance and the, the procedures that you need to go in order to, to do that. And I hope you and I wish you success. I want also to know from you, are there available opportunities uh, for better access to the market and finance uh, for women's business businesses in Montenegro? Uh, Dragana told us that she's helping you. And what is your experience uh, with that? Until oh, now? Well uh, well, um, uh, in December 2022, uh, I, have, I applied for a grant scheme uh, 
so uh, Dragana helped me uh, through the application procedure, which is uh, very complicated. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm very happy that I'm quite busy uh, with the business uh, and I uh, needed a co uh, consultant uh, who would, would engage uh, more in making financial decision to enlarge my business. Thank you. Yeah, there was also the case with Arieta and she mentioned how the support of CBS um, uh, with financial consultant as Granvera helped her save time while she can also manage her, her business, which is very successful, and at the same time enlarge uh, the business with uh, more access to finance. Um, I know that, uh, Dragana, you are, besides uh, from owning a business, um, you are an ISO standard expert uh, who is helping um, implement uh, the standards uh, for Miriana business. Uh, can you tell us more about the importance of these standards? Um, why did uh, Mixo decide to implement the standards and why is it is important uh, for the company to have these standards? Yes, Anila, uh, as you said, uh, I have over 10 years of experience in the implementation of ISO standards. And uh, as you can know, ISO standards are, are the strategic tools which provide requirements and guidelines to help companies to ensure that their business is uh, efficient as possible so they can respond to the most demanding challenges uh, of modern business and to more easily access to new markets. So the implementation of ISO standards in the company Mixo uh, in the pro production of codes is important for several uh, reasons. Uh, first, um, it uh, ensures that the organization has a strong quality management systems uh, in uh, place. Uh, this means that the entry process, uh, production process, is uh, carefully controlled to uh, ensure that the uh, finished product meets the uh, necessary required quality standards. Uh, with this certification, uh, Mixo customers can be uh, confident that they are uh, purchasing a high quality products. Uh, also, uh, as Mirina uh, plans to offer her products on the European market, uh, the implementation yes. of these standards will help, help her to provide the quality of the uh, product uh, faster because she has applied the requirements of that international good practice. Yeah, and she has to be competitive in other markets as well. So I think the, the standards are very important and I think you're doing a great job in that. Um, and you also are a women SME yourself. You have showed us the perspective of uh, being both financial and technical consultant with our project and with our support. What is your experience as a woman SME in this region? The challenges that you had um, and have still, or how you overcome uh, in daily basis, these challenges and talk about some opportunities that you would like to have as a woman SME yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anila. That is a very, very good question. Uh, so, uh, as a woman owner of a company in my country, I face in challenges such as a limited access to financing, lock of business networks, and central. Uh, however, I overcome, uh, overcome those challenges by looking for alternative sources of funding, uh, like family, friends, and central. But some opportunities uh, that must be created for women of uh, SME in Montenegro are greater access to financing, more mentorship programs, more training and education programs, and more opportunities to network with other business owners and industry professionals. Also, I must say that uh, government, governments, private organizations, and other stakeholders must work together to provide support and create an enabling environment for women entrepreneurs to thrive. Uh, because, it is, because it is very important to understand that only an economically independent woman can have a long-term effect on the overall economic growth and development in the one country. Thank I, you. Uh, also, sorry? Thank you, Dragana. I know I just say that uh, you have very good suggestions and remarks. Thank you. Do you want to say something else? Just, just uh, to add that uh, um, in the last uh, few years, the government of Montenegro has started to work um, intensively on uh, creating a better environment for women in business, but that is not still enough. Why I say that? Because um, I would like to use uh, this opportunity to send a message to all the women in the West Balkan. 
Uh, so, uh, dear my ladies, first of all, you must believe in yourself because if you believe in yourself, the others uh, will too also. And then to follow your dreams and go into the world of business because you can do it. And the most important thing is that you never forgot that we, other women, are always with you. We are your support. Okay. Thank you. That was very, very kind uh, remarks from you. And I truly believe that all these women that we have today are a great example on how to do that and how projects as ours and other projects as well will continue to do in order to, to enable a better environment for all women SMEs. Um, thank you. And um, now I would like uh, to um, open the floor to questions uh, from the audience. So any of you, if you have questions, I will um, take care in the chat and I will pose the, the, the questions to each of the panel speakers. And we can wait. Maybe we'll have yeah, we have a question from Laura. Thank you, Laura, for your question. Um, the question is to Miriana. Um, what conditions uh, do you find most important in your loan? And what are the most effective financial products for your business or women SMEs? So when you, uh, do you understand the question? Uh, yes. So uh, when well, you, you apply for a loan, what are, you know, the most important conditions that you look? Uh, well, uh, kind of, yeah, what kind of financial products would you like to to have for your business and products? Well, uh, for next period, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, my plan is to purchase new machines and also to implement uh, the software for that is specific software uh, for cutting uh, pieces of fabric and that uh, that part of um, uh, that part of um, uh, work in our production is very slow process so that uh, that uh, software uh, definitely uh, uh, would uh, be good for our production and time. also yeah and we'll also, time. yeah okay and also i think um, uh, iso standards implementation uh, of iso standards iso standards is very important because uh, as uh, we know uh, the um, only the best things are uh, good enough for kids so uh, definitely i think that is very important thing for our brand to implement iso standards Thank you, Miriana. Um, we also have a question from Carly. Um, I think it's a general question for everyone, so feel free to answer. How can uh, women better support each other's business goals? I think this question was answered from Dragana <laughs> last remarks. But if some of, some of you want to, tell, to say something, please be free. Yes, I think that the message that I said before a few minutes is the answer on that question because I really think that that is important that um, each woman uh, supports the other woman that is the, the, the right uh, support, right thing for uh, one human uh, community in Montenegro and across the, the Western Balkans. Thank you. Thank you, Jana. Would any one of you say something about, would like to say something, how can we better support uh, each other's business goals? Uh, Anila, if I may add, yes, uh, I, I think that the support can also be in very small things. For example, like, like this webinar that we're doing today, I think hearing the story of Arieta and Miriana, who have hands-on experience on the business, the challenges that they face, but also looking at where they are now at a very successful place, this could be, this is very inspiring to me. And I believe that this could also be inspiring to women that have a small business and that have big dreams and they want to achieve something more, but sometimes maybe they might be a bit frightened or lack some confidence. So I think that also like sharing these successful stories is also a kind of support. Yeah, thank you. And we will make sure that we'll do more 
this kind of webinars uh, with our success stories, but also with other stakeholders as well in order to, um, to support each other. Um, Arita, would you say something? I, for this yeah. or? For yes, this or? Uh, I can say from my experiences, it's like uh, mostly if there is a service also or products and if the owners are one woman and three men, so it's better to suggest to your friends or to your clients, uh, the company who is uh, owner of a woman. I had also this privilege and support from many women and I had uh, many clients just because of this. And this was a really big uh, support for my company. Yeah, that's a very good idea. Yeah, that's a very good idea. We can share that. Um, we have a question from Mila. Um, how SMEs can find consultants in the local area? for technical assistance in access to finance. So for example, you can uh, share your experience, Harriet, how did you find CBS or vice versa, how maybe CBS found you or Miriana and Dragana, how did you connect and what is the best way to approach, um, to find uh, consultants that will help with access to finance? Uh, our, our story with Arieta is actually very interesting. Uh, how we connected was actually through you guys, because yeah. Arieta, uh, if I remember cor correctly, reached out to you, and then you reached out to us because uh, we were your consultants and partners in Albania, and this is how we met uh, Arieta and her company. <laughs> yeah, and Dragana and Miriana, what is your story? So, uh, in Montenegro, we have some of association of young entrepreneur and a woman entrepreneur. And in, that, in this, um, uh, I think uh, we celebrate some year of that uh, one of the association, uh, that young entrepreneur. And in that um, event, I, I met the Mirena and uh, heard the story about uh, their production essential. Yeah, that's very good. And word of mouth uh, in this region works. So I guess we will do also more um, sessions around the region to um, notify that we are working with uh, financial consultants, consultants and we have great consultants as you, Dragana and Pranvera, who are helping uh, women SMEs access to finance. Um, next question um, is uh, from Geta if I, I don't know if I'm spelling it correctly. Um, my experience on access to finance initiatives and linkage works when facilitative projects exist. However, I don't see sustainability from banks after project time finish. The question is, what is your sustainability strategy? Okay. Um, I think that that question might be or maybe um yeah is that correct is something yes yeah. sure uh and i think that this is a very good question thank you thank you for that it's true that uh, while the project exists and while we we push the banks and we uh, focus all our attention into them the, the project goes very well but what happens next uh this is also a challenge and something that we a problem that we had and what we did uh, as i explained for example with the women sme uh, uh with the women product loan product uh we helped the bank to also back this uh, uh product with a guarantee fund now whenever backed with a guarantee fund this um the banks are far more prone to actually give loans to this uh, segment because now they have a risk sharing facility they have some kind of support and um uh, another reason is that uh, most of the products that we have chosen and that we have developed for our partner banks are also the main topics in their social agenda. And there are also some types of requirements from parent banks. For example, we know now that we're transitioning to green economy. So having a green product or a green loan is necessary and is sometimes a requirement. We know that we're giving focus to women SMEs. Funds are coming towards that. And at the end of the day, bank is a business. So it knows that if the focus is there and funds are there and guarantee funds and support is there, they will also jump into it. 
Yeah, so I think it will benefit both ways. And also, I can say to exactly. I can add to your answer that with Lotus Plus uh, platform that we are supporting and you're doing, I think it will be sustainable uh, for a very long run and maybe be even bigger when we when we leave. Um, yeah, okay. It's exactly that, uh, Anila, because all the pro uh, alternative products that we're uh, creating will be part of Lores, and Lores is an existing platform, so it has a very good relationship with banks, it's follow-ups on its clients, it's follow-ups on its products, so I think this also will create sustainability over time. Thank you. Thank you, Pramira. Does anyone want to add something to this question? Um, we don't have uh, any other question now. For now, um, we can wait. I can only add to this. Hi, Ma Maria. Maria is our uh, colleague and she's our regional uh, finance expert and she has a long expertise also with banks. So maybe she can add something uh, very good <laughs> for the discussion. I really enjoyed this session. And it was very nice to see how young entrepreneurs are fighting on the market and showing how successful they can be. And it, uh, you are just a good example how we have to develop and how we can empower ourselves. So I will just add, don't underestimate the, the uh, uh, guide from a consultant if there is a nearby one that uh, can help you in developing your business and your strategy and uh, making your, your dream reality, uh, just go for the consultant and uh, share your story. Uh, there, is, there is always unique idea and uh, unique businesses, but it's better to learn from someone who has already gone through the path and has the experience to, to help you. So, uh, for the audience, if uh, you need a consultant, which is in the region that we are covering, Western Balkans, please refer to our project because we are developing a network of consultants and uh, we can connect you with them and we can assist you in covering some of the expense for that service. So be our guests and share your story with us and we will do our best to help you in your success. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Um, we don't have any question, but if some of you want to leave a comment or anything, please be free in the chat. If not, I would uh, like to uh, thank everyone uh, for taking the time uh, to be part of today's webinar. Um, I hope it was an interesting discussion for all participants uh, and I want, uh, by that note, I want to summarize some of the main points that were discussed throughout this uh, webinar. Uh, so we have heard today uh, some successful examples on how consultants can work with women SMEs, how important is the role of consultant in accessing appropriate finance. We have also heard from one of our partners some very interesting solutions for alternative financial products. Um, there are tailored for women SMEs, how digital platforms can help women access finance better by offering educational contents as well. We have also uh, touched upon the question of some key constraints preventing women to access finance, both on the demand side, such as limited financial management knowledge, lack of appetite to take risk, lack of property, which is translated in lack of collateral, and from the supply side, uh, for example, how financial institutions perceive and approach women SMEs, which in the case of Miriana, for example, as she told us, was that supply side, because of long and bureaucratic procedures, took very long time to issue the loan to Miriana's business. And from the case of Arieta, we've seen that she was refused because her business lacked collateral and wasn't taken serious because of that. And how financial intermediaries such as Dragana and Bramvera can support and help women attain information about available uh, sources of finance. Moreover, issues such as lack of qualified workforce, as were discussed from Miriana's perspective in Montenegro, unfair competitiveness, a company with a lack of control and regulations from the government, are some other dra drawbacks uh, that women SMEs in the region have to deal in order to sustain and grow their businesses. 
I hope and I truly hope that projects such as USAID Catalyze and Youth of Growth and other projects as well can impact positively the environment um, for women SMEs because we have seen that we have a lot of potential. Uh, with that uh, being said, I would like to invite all to follow our work of Catalyze USAID programs through social media platforms such as LinkedIn. Um, and just to let you know um, that the recording of this web webinar will be available to the public and the market links website. In the meantime, if you have any additional questions, comments, or any suggestions, you can always write to us on our project's email, which you can find it on the chat, I believe. And we have uh, some comments uh, from Ariana. Thank you, Ariana. And uh, from others as well. Uh, so on that note, I would like uh, maybe to invite Karina to end or if she wants to say something in the end. Um, I'm very thankful and uh, it was my honor to be here today to facilitate this interesting uh, webinar. And I hope that uh, I will see you soon all and to have more webinars uh, of this kind to support each other. Thank you. Thank you, Anila. Thank uh, you, Anila, everyone. Very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Bye-bye.